Hello, it's Ruby and today I'm going to be starting a study with me. I'm starting on Monday evening at quarter past six. I've just got a few things I need to do, some reading, answering some seminar preparation questions, then going through some extra resources, answering some more seminar questions, and then I'm going to edit a video and um, hoover and then I'm gonna go to bed. I think I can definitely get this all done by nine, which is my aim because I kind of want to get an early night. Let's get started and let's be productive. Okay, so the first thing I did here was just clear my desktop and also post a quick video to IGTV. And then I got started with doing this reading for criticisms. So this week we were looking at post-structuralism and we had a reading from Derrida. So if you've ever read Derrida before, you'll know that his prose is really quite difficult to understand. And we talked about this in our seminars, but he does do this on purpose. It fits in with the very idea of post-structuralism. So he's deliberately very ambiguous, very vague, and he uses one word in multiple different ways in the same piece, which it can be quite confusing. Personally, I actually really enjoy reading it, even though it is really tricky. But as you can see, I just had a piece of paper next to me as I was reading through this on my iPad, and anything that I didn't really understand, any ideas which didn't immediately make sense to me, I would think the on the paper and just write out the idea in bullet point form so that I could understand his philosophical logical argument. This is something I really recommend, especially if you're studying philosophy. So when I was finished with those readings, I decided to write up my notes from the post-structuralism lecture which I'd been to and we are sent some seminar preparation questions by our lecturer, so I just went through these questions, answered these using my notes from the lectures and some extra research as well. So then I moved on to answering the seminar preparation questions for beginnings. This was the other set which I, te which I told you about. So we were doing the Winter's Tale this week and we were given a list of questions and so I went through and started a very detailed document answering all of these questions. So. In particular, we were asked to look at three different scenes in the play and identify ambiguities and where directors are given decisions as to how the play is to be portrayed and seen. And it's really interesting to think about, particularly, I think, in terms of Hermione's resurrection. And um, I'm really interested in the role of Mamilius in that scene. If you haven't watched The Winter's Tale or read it, I really recommend it. That final scene is actually one of my favourites in Shakespeare. So I haven't quite finished with seminar prep. I wanted to finish all of this, but I just haven't. Um, I was way too optimistic. It's 20 past nine, and I actually wanna get this video edited instead of working on this, because I'd rather do studying in the morning and editing in the evening, because um, I've got more brain power in the morning. I'm gonna put this to one side and do some editing for maybe half an hour. So I've also decided to add this library study with me to the end of this video because lots of people say that when I upload study with me's they would prefer for them to be a tiny bit longer so I just decided to put these clips into this video too. So in this clip I am doing some work ready for my criticism seminar so this is the following week and this week we were doing discourse and power so I went through the study questions and I answered these. So the questions we had to answer were what is discourse, what has language got to do with power, how can understanding discourse help us to interpret literature and how is discourse related to ideology. They were all really interesting questions and I used the resources which I found online to answer these. The question of what language has to do with power is especially interesting and this is actually a dynamic which I'm fascinated by. I mean as Orwell explores in 1984 with the number of words in the dictionary slowly but surely being reduced. When we control language, the language that people have access to, we also control the ideas that they're able to have and articulate. And similarly, Brecht actually encourages us to be conscious of who is speaking and why are these particular words being used. So the whole idea of subjectivity and bias was explored very nicely by Brecht also lies very in line with his work as a drama practitioner. Um, I'm not surprised in the slightest that Brecht had this idea. They're just some quick thoughts on the relationship between language and power. I definitely recommend looking into it, so reading some Foucault if you would like to, because it is very, very interesting. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this mismatch study with me, and I hope that you have a productive week.